Hello and welcome to Growing Old, where we discuss all aspects of aging and what you can do to make the transition to your later years better. We talk about health, mental well-being, and the more difficult areas of growing old. If you enjoy this information, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. And please let us know what you are doing to grow old gracefully. How the Aging Brain Resets Over time, the structure of the brain is known to change. It grows lighter, for example, and shrinks slightly. One of the cliches of neurology is that the human brain loses roughly a million neurons per year as it ages. This caused many people to think that this is what caused the onset of senility. The flaw in this thinking, however, are the numerous people who don't become senile as they age. Presumably, they have lost the same number of neurons. We simply don't know why one old brain stays lively and creative. Think of Michelangelo, who designed the Sistine Chapel in Rome when he was almost 90, or Picasso, who was still painting well into his 90s, or Arthur Rubinstein, who gave some of his most memorable concerts in Carnegie Hall when he was in his 80s and 90s. We know that no two brain cells ever actually touch physically. They reach toward each other across a gap, or synapse, using thousands of hair-like filaments known as dendrites. Just at the point where two filaments almost meet, a chemical signal can be sent from one neuron to another. The basic chemicals involved are acetylene choline and dopamine. If there is a deficiency in acetylene choline, the person usually develops or has Alzheimer's. A lack of dopamine leads to Parkinson's. No one knows why some neurons grow more dendrites than others. What we do know is that by remaining mentally active, older people may actually be growing new dendrites all the time. Marion Diamond, a researcher at Berkeley, showed that the brain of rats grew or shrank according to the kinds of experiences they were exposed to. If the rats were kept in cages and didn't have any interaction with other rats, their cortexes shrank and there was a loss of dendrites. But if an old rat was put back into the rat society and given lots of stimulation, its brain expanded and grew more dendrites. This gave a physiological explanation for what is often observed in lonely, isolated old people. They are more likely to be confused, disoriented, dull, and vacant. The exact opposite is observed in those who remain actively involved with family and friends. The brain seems to have its own natural mechanisms for activating itself in old age. New dendrites grow longer and sprout new branches past the age of 80. As neurons shrink, they create new synapses, which in turn stimulate more electrochemical activity in the brain. It's true that older people may not be as quick in timed tests, but they don't lose judgment, orientation, or vocabulary. But what about preserving intelligence in old age? Research shows that there is no significant drop in IQ from ages 65 to 75. There can be a sharp drop in intelligence about a year before a person's death. But it's impossible to lump all old people together. It is the individual 
not old age that makes the difference. If there is a decline, it is most often the result of an underlying condition, such as high blood pressure. Sufferers may experience small, barely detectable strokes, which are associated with hypertension. This may cause the decline rather than the aging process itself. We can't look to medicine alone as we age. There is just so much the medical profession can do when it comes to aging. Rather than becoming over-reliant on the latest cure for cancer, heart disease, or Alzheimer's, we need to see that successful aging is far more than the avoidance of disease, although this is important. It involves a lifelong commitment to oneself every day. Doctors may help in making this commitment, but medicine is not a replacement for it. Medical research has made some incredible breakthroughs, especially regarding childhood mortality. But the benefits to society still fall short of our expectations. This is true of cancer, heart disease, and degenerative disorders. And as a whole, the U.S. population has become increasingly more dependent on drugs. Over the age of 70, the average American takes at least three and a half kinds of drugs, both prescription and over-the-counter. Someone who is sick could be taking 10 or more drugs, and many of the drugs exist solely to relieve the side effects of other drugs. And then there are addictions. There is still no effective treatment for alcoholism, that is, in curing at least 50% of patients. Grade school kids are taking more drugs than ever before. Smoking is on the rise again, and the new kid on the block, the obesity epidemic, caused by the addictive power of our modern ultra-processed food diet. The positive side to all this is that it throws into sharp focus the need for personal initiative. Longevity is still an individual achievement. It comes primarily to those whose expectations are high enough to reach for it. Is there cause for optimism as we age and our brain resets? Let's look at some results from the Baltimore Longitudinal Study begun in 1958, where 800 volunteers between the ages of 20 and 103 agreed to be examined and go through a battery of tests every few years. Some of the key findings are, as we age, our physical status varies widely from person to person. By the time a person is in their 80s, the differences are enormous. Physical performance always declines over time when groups are measured, but the decline measured in individuals will vary widely. Those who exhibit the slowest decline are those who effectively practice the use it or lose it motto for their well-being. Mental function is maintained and boosted by those who keep active mentally and pursue stimulating mind activities. The most complex organs, like muscles, are the first to diminish. Losing muscle, muscle tissue is the main reason for an inability to work as much as before, walk long distances, or cause people to fall. Avoiding the harmful side effects of being overweight, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and hardening of the arteries, does dramatically improve one's lifespan. 
Although older people continue to metabolize alcohol as well as when they were younger, the effects get stronger. Reducing or eliminating alcoholic intake supports longer, healthier life as we age. High levels of cholesterol do not keep rising with age. Sugar tolerance declines with age, hence the high level of type 2 diabetes in the over 50s. A small proportion of older people, however, do not develop the disease even after the change in their body's ability to use glucose in the bloodstream. This is only a small sample of what the Baltimore research discovered, but it confirms the belief that everyone grows more unique with age, and this uniqueness includes the possibility for improvement in any area. In considering how to improve physical and mental function every day for the rest of our lives, three imperatives emerge. First, each one of us should aim for longevity since life is a primary good and a tremendous gift. Second, we should keep alive our creativity so as to make life interesting and push us to want more life. And third, by reflecting on all our experiences over the course of our lives, we do grow in wisdom. It should be our intention to foster and develop the natural wisdom all of us gains by living year after year. Thank you for sharing this time with us. Please leave a comment below and let us know what you are doing in your own life to promote longevity, foster creativity, and grow in wisdom. You never know whose life you may touch and improve by your experiences. Until next time, happy aging.